One of my favorite things to do is people watch. It always makes me go, God, we're such strange animals. We're always doing such strange things. And I find it particularly interesting to observe older folks, to look at their faces and see how they interact with the world. It's fascinating to me the gap in the things that I see. You know, sometimes I see people that are cynical, bitter, and paranoid, but I also see almost the exact opposite. People that even into old age somehow don't ever stop asking questions. I guess I'm interested in those people because I've always said that I want to be like that. You know, I want to be the 87 year old man that's still going, that still has a life. The alternative scares me. I, I don't even want to imagine it. So why does it happen? I'm not entirely sure. I'm trying to figure that part out. And I consider this a subject of grave importance. I think life can feel hard and confusing and unfair. And I've mentioned in the past the mind games that I play on myself. From an emotional perspective in particular, life can feel extremely turbulent. And the crazy thing about all this is that for the most part, it's not other people that are doing this to me. It's me doing this to me. These are all things that live in my head. So much of what's out there, so much material and so many products are marketed to prey on and profit off of the fears that we have about ourselves. And I don't think more productivity is the answer to these problems or feelings of inadequacy. I'm speaking for myself here. I pretty regularly don't feel very motivated or productive or inspired for sometimes rather long periods of my life because there's always shit that's happening. That's life. And things almost never go exactly according to plan. And I think, I feel like we're in denial about the fact that we're emotional, irrational creatures. The amount of cognitive biases that we have because of the way that we've evolved is just clear proof of that in my opinion. And as we've all seen, the messiness of life is particularly obvious this year, but it has always been the case and it always will be. Now, there are a lot of people out there that are willing to sell you the answers to success or the dream. And this ranges from the obviously scammy to the subtly manipulative. I can't help but think that if all the advice out there just worked, then the self-help industry wouldn't be a multi-billion dollar business. Maybe it's the way it's presented, or maybe it's just a me problem, which could be the case, but sometimes it feels entirely unattainable. And maybe we're trying to find answers to unsolvable problems. We've created impossible standards and are playing into a system that doesn't really value many of the important things in life. Fortunately, I actually think there's another way, and I'm presenting all this as if it were some sort of new technology coming out of Silicon Valley when, in reality, nothing could be further from the truth. In a capitalistic world that tries to commoditize absolutely everything, this is something that gets forgotten and pushed aside constantly because it flies in the face of mindlessly feeding into the machine. It's a little thing called curiosity. When we're born, we essentially inherit the world and everything that comes with it from our ancestors. And I find this idea both amazing and gut-wrenching. I guess I'll start with the good part. Humans have done some incredible stuff throughout history. We've created languages and traditions, and we've made beautiful things. We're part of this unbelievably long relay race that I find astounding. Through our creativity, we have time and again shown that we're capable of accomplishing the impossible. Okay, now for the not so amazing part. We inherit all the problems, and there are a lot of them. Not only that, many of the systems currently in place actively perpetuate these problems or do nothing to solve them. We don't have a history of treating each other very well, and we're very quick to step over each other in our rush for progress. So you enter this world and the weight of responsibility gets placed on your shoulders. And depending on your background and your circumstances and the path that you take, there are many levels of responsibility that get placed on all of us as we go through life, of being a good citizen, a good family member, a good person. And it's not entirely clear how to juggle not just the responsibility, but the pressure that comes with it. I honestly think that if you try to imitate the people that came before you and please everybody and follow all the rules and fit into whatever model of success is currently in place, I'm sorry to say it, but you're doomed to fail. Curiosity requires space, and the more you try to squeeze yourself into other people's ideas or expectations of who you are or who you should be, the less space you end up having. Being a good fill in the blank was probably defined by somebody else a long time ago, and that's problematic in a world that's constantly changing. The only way to get out of this labyrinth of an inheritance that we all received upon being born into this world is not through asking for permission, but by asking questions by paying close attention, by being, for lack of a better word, curious. 
it's the only way, it's the only option that we have because you cannot be creative, you cannot make discoveries about who you are or the world around you if you think you already have all the answers. I'm not saying any of this is easy, okay? Challenging anything from anybody, honestly, scares me. I do wish we all got along more and I do sometimes allow myself to shut down some of my curiosity whenever I allow society to convince me that it's not worth anything. But in Malcolm Gladwell's words, nothing of consequence gets done without courage. It's a lot of pressure to always feel inspired and motivated and to shoulder the responsibilities of this world and to fit into labels and to perform and to always do the right thing. When I talk about my life as a series of experiments, it's my way out of some of that pressure. There's something about asking questions and approaching things that way that opens the world up. I would almost call this a superpower if it wasn't already built into all of us, but it's clear to me that it's not something that you can afford to take for granted. Now, there are many ways that you can go about doing this. My preferred method of approaching things is essentially pretending that I'm a researcher here to learn what it means to be human. I'm currently on a very interesting assignment called Being Nathaniel, and right now I'm learning what it means to live life in June of 2020. I'll give you some examples. Some of my very favorite things right now are French bread, the way it's light out past 10 p.m. these days, and French people on bikes. This motto of mine that everything I do is just part of a series of experiments is one of the things that allows me to keep going. It's something that has allowed me to avoid getting paralyzed by everything that's going on. I'm not saying I'm original, okay? I'm not. I've seen this sentiment echoed all over the place. Gandhi wrote that life has become for me a series of experiments with truth. In my pursuit of truth, I came across the method of nonviolence. It is almost certainly a completely overused example, but can we just take a moment to imagine what how different things would have looked if Gandhi just accepted the world that he was born into. One of the craziest things that I realized recently is that somebody else's enthusiasm in something that I don't maybe necessarily think that I care about is enough to potentially change my mind and to make me interested in it. Author Sam Ren Lewis in his book, The Happiness Problem, describes three powerful consequences of curiosity. He writes, First, by being curious, we open ourselves up to the potential value of the things that would otherwise pass us by. This is the realm of beauty. Second, we become more aware of the potential value of the things we already have. We feel gratitude and contentment. Third, we can respond to the challenges we face with greater flexibility, less stuck in our habitual ways of seeing the world. Together, these three benefits of curiosity are an inner resource we can draw upon to explore and commit to what really matters. One of the biggest dangers that we all have to fight against is our own brains. Some of you might already be familiar with the hedonic treadmill, also sometimes known as hedonic adaptation. It's the observed tendency of humans to quickly return to a relatively stable level of happiness despite major positive or negative events or life changes. And that's just one example. There's all kinds of ways that we are programmed for survival uh, in a world that doesn't exist anymore, things have changed. Our brains will tell us that we don't have enough and simply acting on that without any sort of self-reflection is not gonna get us anywhere. I'm essentially proposing a different way of approaching things. One of the beautiful things about curiosity is that there's nothing that you cannot be curious about. You can wonder about obvious things like life and death and the universe and if mayonnaise is an instrument, but you can also wonder and be curious about less obvious things like why you're not feeling happy or focused or motivated and that's okay too in fact that's the point i think curiosity is what makes life worth living if you're curious enough about something you'll find a way This video was sponsored by Skillshare. I'm really grateful to have their support, which has allowed me to, in general, raise the production quality of these videos. By the way, I can't quite share a ton of details just yet, but I am working with them to create an original course that I think might interest a lot of you guys. That should be coming out at some point within the next few months. 
Basically, for those of you that don't know, Skillshare is a website, an online repository of online courses. They have a massive selection and you can learn anything from photography and filmmaking to animation and lifestyle and organization. A year-long membership comes out to less than $10 a month and it's definitely worth checking out if you're looking to explore new fields of interest. As many of you know, I'm a huge fan of street photography and I really liked this course in particular, as well as this one on drawing. I often find it inspiring to observe the creative process of others. The first 1,000 of you guys that use the link in the description below can get a couple months of Skillshare Premium for free to explore what they have to offer. Consider checking it out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.